In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Android Studio to create your first Android application. Now, when you've launched Android Studio, you should be presented with a screen a bit like this one, where you get to create a new project. The project name we're going to call Hello World. And we set all the APIs to the highest value available. In this case, I've got API 18 Android 4.3. If you haven't got the latest version installed, in a few minutes I'll show you how you go about upgrading your SDK. I'm going to have a custom launcher icon and I'm going to have an activity. So I click on next and I get to design my icon with an image, clip art or text. And I'm going to have a blank activity. Now, before we start developing the application, I'm going to show you two important features. The first one is how to make sure you've got the latest SDK installed. And then I'm going to show you how to create an emulator, a phone simulator. So at the top here, you'll see there's various buttons. This one here is the SDK manager. If I click on this, I get to choose which SDKs are installed on this computer. And as you can see from this list, I've got Android 4.3 SDK platform installed on this computer. You can add and remove SDKs using this screen. I'm now going to create a simulator. I choose this little button here, which is the virtual device manager. And if I go to device definitions, there's a list of common Android devices which I can base my simulator on. So I'm going to choose a Nexus 1 and I'm going to say create Android virtual device. There's a few settings you have to do. I've decided it's going to run Android 4.3. I don't want a hardware keyboard. I don't want a skin, I just want the screen itself. And I can choose whatever camera I want. So I could have webcam zero for instance. It would use my webcam and my computer as the camera of the simulator. I click on OK. And if I go to my Android virtual devices, you can see the top one is the one I've just created. I've already created one, so I'm going to delete that one I've just done. And it's a good idea to start the simulator before you start writing code, because it can take some time to load. So I click on the device name, and I click on Start. I can scale the display so the size of the screen dimensions match the actual device but I'm just going to launch it pixel for pixel. As you can see the device emulator started to load and we're going to leave that and come back to it a bit later. I'll close this screen now. I will hide the simulator behind the code window and now we can get on with our development. The next step is to create the user interface. So we navigate using this breadcrumb trail at the top I click on source, main. The layout is in the res layout, and there's the layout XML. I've got two ways to look at this. I can look at it as an XML file, and as you get more comfortable with this, you might actually edit the XML directly. Or I can click on the design tab, and I get to build my interface using drag and drop. And for this example, we're going to use the drag and drop approach. So I'm going to add a label and a button. So let's look at these widgets. Um, large text, medium text, large text. That'll do, let's have a large text, but we'll delete the existing component first. Click on large text and drag it onto the screen. This is called a relative layout, where each control is positioned relative to other controls on the screen. So in this one, we're centering it and we're placing it below the top edge of the screen. And if you look at this layout margin, it's got 16 device independent pixels at the top. And we've got and it's centered. There's my text. I've now got a button to place. Before we do that, we're going to change the ID of the text. That's really important. So let's organize and filter it. And let's find ID. And these are the names are at sign plus ID forward slash and the name we want to give it. So I call this one my 
label. So I know what it's called. So now I'm going to add a button. I drag the button and this button is simply going to be centered. Okay, we're aligning right to my label, that's fine. That'll, that'll do. Line left, line right, below my label margin. There's my two components positioned on the screen. And this one I'm going to give it, call it ID my button. Like so. So there's my interface designed. My next job is to view my, my controller, my code if you like. But before we do that, looks like the simulator is loaded. I'm going to test that, the application, to make sure it runs. So I click on the run button and it'll ask me which device I want to test it on. There we are. Choose a running device, emulator Nexus 1. Okay. And it's now going to run on that emulator. And there we are. There's my button and there's my label. So back to the code now. I'm going to change, I'm going to hide this um, log screen. And I'm going to go back to source Java, mainactivity.java. And here's my code. So I'm now going to add some code to this application. I can delete the on create options menu because we're not, we haven't covered menus yet. So I've simply got this bit of code here. The first thing I've got to do though, I've got to implement the on-click handler. I've got to allow this controller to handle button clicks. So implements and the on-click handler comes from Android dot view dot view dot there we are. And it's got a little error here because I haven't implemented the click handler yet. So my next job is I'm going to, okay, there it tells me this should be an abstract method called on click view. So public void on click and pass it to view. And there's my code. Now the error, now the error's gone away, you see? So this is where we're going to do our on-click handler. But before we do that, we've got to connect the controls on the view to the controller file. So I've got to create some objects to reference my controls. So I'm going to have text view, my label and button my button. I'm just matching the names just to make it easy to understand what's going on. And it's saying um, button, can't resolve button, android.widget.button, well that's right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to import all the widgets. So I put dot star and that will import all the widgets, all the view widgets. So my next job is to connect these up to the view. So I'm going to say my button equals button find view by id r dot id dot my button and that's the reference to the view. My label equals text view, find view by id, r.id dot my label. There we are. So I've now connected the two together. And the final thing to do is set the on-click handler for the button. So my button, set on-click listener this. And that means this controller file, this class, will handle the on clicks. So let's add a little log message in here so we can make sure it works. Log.v I've got a tag I need to put on it so I'll call it op just give it anything you want. On click. 
And there we are. That should work now. So I click on run. No, there's an error. Oh, cannot resolve symbol log. What's it saying? Android.util.log. Yes, that's what we want. So import android.util.log. And I've imported that class now. And the errors have gone away. Save that. Click on run. And it should now run. Yes, I'll choose device. Let's have that one again. Now, the problem we've got is there's lots of log messages coming through here. So we need to filter our log messages so we only see the messages we want to see. So we need to filter our log messages so we only see the messages that we want to see. If you remember, we had an opi tag on our log message. So I'm going to create a filter called my log tag opi, like that. And I call this one opi so I can save it. By log level verbose, that's fine. And now when I run this and I click on the button, then we look at the logs. You can see at the bottom it says on click. So we know that it's working. So now we can add some more code. Now we know the event handler is working. We can change the contents of the label to whatever we want to change it to. This dot my label dot text. That's the property we're going to change. And we're going to change it to hello world, like that. And that will change the prop text property of the label to say hello world. So final test to make sure everything works well. And let's see if we can get this to work properly. Okay, I choose the same, I choose the same device. And if I click on the button, it now says hello world.